a crucial component of identity politics, and perhaps even the oxygen the beast breathes, is group guilt. Now this is the idea that an entire group, whether it's race or sex or sexual orientation, can be collectively guilty and should feel collective guilt, and even make amends by verbal apologies, financial aid, and governmental reparations. Now needless to say, collective guilt on such a scale is an absurd concept, but to the identity politics type who doesn't recognize the individual, and as I said in a previous video, simply sees everyone as nothing more but an extension of their group identity, an empty, hollow avatar traversing through life, it somehow makes sense. Now the form I want to talk about today is racial guilt, specifically white guilt. Now the reason I separate the two is because I'm certain soon enough the identity politics beast will find another racial group guilty. There's this video going around of these of a group of black men who have formed a cult-like, godless religion based on a hierarchy of historical oppression and predicated on the guilt of white people. They shall bow down to thee with what? With their face toward the earth and lick up the dust of thy feet. So God requires an action. Alec, are you willing to be the ambassador of all so-called white people right now and apologize. If, if that is what requir is required of me to apologize, then I will do it. Okay, all right, go ahead, Alan. Read it again, they show what? And they shall bow down to thee with their face toward the earth. With your face toward the earth. Are y'all going to join Alec and apologize? We're watching the ceremony. No, so this isn't a ceremony. Alec, tell them what you're doing, Alec. I'm bowing down. Why? Why, Alec? To apologize for the slavery. Are y'all going to join Alec and apologize for slavery? I'll apologize right, for on, what I do wrong, come not on, for other people's wrong. You said what? I'll apologize for my wrongs, not other people's wrongs. So Alec is so Alec is a better man. So there you have a white guy who had never been a slave owner apologizing to black men who had never been enslaved. Now, as disturbing as that video is, it gets worse but I'd quickly like to talk about what the family man said, and that is that he won't apologize for something he hadn't done. Now that is the crux of this issue. To most of us, that makes complete and utter sense. And let's just follow their train of thought for a minute and ask, how far can you go with this? How far back can you go to claim oppression? How much of a relation to a certain identity group do you need to have in order to be guilty? Who decides which crimes and oppressions are worthy of guilt. You know, this is insane. As a Jew, I can play this game all day long, but I would never demand an apology of anyone who hadn't wronged me. It's simply absurd. Now, another thing I want to talk about is how these men are a product of identity politics and far-left ideologies. They breed, on the one hand, weak, deluded apologists, and on the other, you have these aggressive, power-thirsty lunatics. You know, the act these men ask him to perform is not only vile and degrading, but does nothing to promote any form of racial justice. They ask him to lick the dust off their boots as some form of sick display of remorse. These men are clearly in need of serious psychological help. And unfortunately, that is nothing I, can, I or, or we can help them with. But what we can do to prevent this escalation and radicalization is stop apologizing for things we hadn't done.